Hallelujah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no matter what it looks like, we will prevail. Come on, tell them again, no matter what it looks like, we will prevail. Come on, put those hands together.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made and we invite you to rejoice with us and be glad. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless you tonight. Father, I thank you tonight for your wonderful grace and your mercy toward us. Father, I lift up this country. Lord God, I lift up Minneapolis, Minnesota in particular, God, and I just pray that your peace would reign uh, in that city and around the world. Father, all of these uh, things that are happening are more evidence that we need you. We need your grace. We need your power. And most of all, men's heart need to be filled. Hearts need to be filled with the love of Christ. So, Father, we bless you tonight. Father, I thank you tonight for all that we have in store. May it bring you glory. May it bring you honor. And may it lift your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord tonight. Listen, we have a very special Bible study time on tonight here in our Insight Bible study. And uh, we're still going to continue to talk about uh, shifting to something greater and hearing the voice of God. And uh, so if you just follow with us tonight, you're still going to be able to hear that theme and that thread on tonight. As you can see on tonight, um, I am uh, honored tonight to have um, part of our youth leadership team with us on tonight. And I'm so excited uh, to have these people with us on this stage tonight that make my job easier and help me fulfill my assignment to minister uh, to the entire family of God, not just to adults, uh, not just to young adults, but to also uh, our youth in particular tonight. And um, I want to be highlighting our youth ministry on tonight and um, talking to us about our youth ministry and uh, all of these wonderful things on tonight. So first of all, to my left, I have um, the world's greatest uh, assistant pastor, Pastor Jeremy uh, D. Casey. And to tell you a little bit about Jeremy, Jeremy has been in ministry uh, since age 14. And uh, he's 16 now. And uh, no, he's a little older than that now, but um, uh, continues to maintain his youth. But uh, he is our assistant pastor and um, also going to be serving on our youth team. Next to Pastor Casey, I have our pastor of music, uh, Minister Douglas Orr, um, who has been in ministry since he was age 13. And uh, all of that will become relevant as the night uh, goes further. And uh, to my right, uh, probably your left as you're looking, I have uh, some fam with me on tonight, uh, Minister Ashley Fitzgerald. Um, that's been in ministry uh, working on a year now, uh, definitely called before the foundation of the world. Um, she's been uh, in ministry since age 35. And uh, last but not least, I have uh, one of a two part team. But yet they still make one husband and wife dynamic duo, uh, Pastor Jamie Johnson, uh, on tonight. And uh, we honor in her absence tonight, uh, Pastor Carson Johnson. They lead our youth ministry. And uh, we're going to talk so much about that. And Jamie has been in ministry since age 31. And uh, of course, he's 32 as well on, on tonight. And uh, but no, 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 no. So. And we just have a wealth of, of wisdom uh, on this stage tonight and people um, that I have shared a vision with uh, for youth ministry and people that are burning uh, with passion and fervor um, to see today's youth um, succeed and excel and uh, become all that God has called them to be. And um, so uh, tonight I wanted to do something uh, just a little bit different. And I wanted to talk about uh, the youth ministry here at Ecclesia because uh, God is birthing something fresh and uh, something new. And uh, we're going to talk about it tonight for about an hour. And remember, we're still talking about hearing the voice of God. We've talked about obeying the voice of God and we talked about hearing the voice of God. And uh, as we seek to shift and uh, to move to uh, new dimensions of greatness in God and to experience more of God, 
we don't want to make the mistake of, of leaving our youth out because we know that uh, the, the youth is the church of today. We used to say they were the church of tomorrow, and I think that's how we erred sometime or we erred sometime uh, because we, we always waited on some later date or some later time to get our youth involved. Uh, but uh, I want to tell you um, that you may not see them in the parking lot, but the eight weeks that Ecclesia has served this community and even beyond, our youth always have a hand. They always have an integral part in serving. If you're here in our Sunday morning service, you will see that our youth are serving all around the campus. And uh, we are so excited uh, about our youth and um, a lot of things that are going on. And um, so I want to open up this dialogue law as we talk about youth because we know with a lot of the societal ills uh, that are happening we have a, a, a contemporary situation happening right now uh, that is going on in Minnesota and these things uh, affect our our youth and in particular uh, they uh, affect our African-American males and uh, young women and um, so, you know, in Jesus' ministry, people were bringing the, their children unto Jesus to be blessed by him, and the disciples uh, were forbidding them. They were sending the children away, but Jesus said, suffer them not. Uh, you know, don't send them away. Don't allow them uh, to, uh, to uh, or allow them rather to come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he equated uh, the humility of children being the disposition uh, that you and I must have as believers if we want to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So I, I wanted to kind of open up and ask the panel this question. Um, you know, Jesus was a friend of the marginal of the marginalized and uh, the outcast, those that were found on the peripheral of society if we might ask those that were found on the extremities of the mainstream uh, uh, people that were often caught in sin the woman in adultery the woman uh, with the issue of blood these are people we found that Jesus the Bible even says he was a friend to the publicans and sinners so I just wanted to lift this question up up, up and we're gonna start with Pastor Jeremy and uh, if if Jesus was doing ministry on earth today, uh, who are some of the people that you think Jesus ministry would include when we when we talk about the marginalized? Hey Amen. Good question. Um, man, I believe that Jesus would definitely target those who are definitely broken for those who are the homeless, um, those who are hungry and needing food, those who are without, those who have been really much pretty much. Uh, cast out by society you know uh, we look at the scriptures uh, he even told the story about the, the good Samaritan someone who was, who was robbed broken and just laying on the side of the road who could have been uh, mistook as a bomb or mistook as somebody who who was a drug addict possibly but uh, Jesus would target those people who who are the least likely labeled to succeed right so I believe if Jesus was was uh, in the ministry of today um, through us he is but as in the ministry of today he would definitely target those who seem to uh, be the last one picked in football, the last one picked yeah. in basketball, the, the one that don't look like everybody else, but those who really have some uh, visible challenges, uh, visible dysfunctions, uh, visible things that uh, that make them an outcast to somebody else. I believe Jesus would definitely uh, target those people. All right. So, uh, Minister Ashley, do you believe, although we are all pro-church, I want you to know that, or, or maybe let me say we're pro-kingdom, but um, Ashley, do you believe that at times the church has failed uh, to really carry out that mission of, of being there for those people that feel they're on the outside, that they um, you know, that they are the outcasts, they are the marginalized. Would, would you say, in your opinion, that at times the church has failed to, to really show the love of Christ and to welcome, um, uh, quote unquote, that demographic of people in the kingdom? Um, I definitely feel that the church has failed in that area um, simply because we want to stereotype everybody, not by what we see, but by what we heard. 
So if you can't turn the flesh off when you walk into the door of the house, we're going to turn a lot of people away. Wow. Because everybody in here has flesh. Right? Yeah. Everybody in here is going to be somebody different. And that's when we have to learn to accept about one another. I'm going to let you be who you are. Right. Because at the end of the day, we still are, were created from the same God. Yeah, yeah, all right. And uh, so, Pastor Jamie, uh, along that same line, uh, would you say at times the church has shone the youth? I know that that's your passion, and uh, you and Pastor Carson work so hard uh, with, with making sure our youth here at Ecclesia and youth in the community as well experience the best. And um, um, I know so many times, just to uh, give you a public thank you, I know uh, so many times you guys go above and beyond what's handed to you and you make those investments from your own livelihood in, into our youth. Do you think at times we have shunned our youth and not uh, considered they were a vital part of the kingdom as well just because they're young? Sometimes you always say, hey, child, get in your place. Right? Yeah. So in the kingdom, God uses any and everybody, just like he's in his family at a very young age, right? And he can use any and everybody. So I believe we, we have failed in that aspect that that we haven't allowed the youth to kind of mature and grow in spiritual spiritual things because we feel as, a, as being adults, there's nothing that a kid can tell me right. when it comes to the kingdom. Right? Right. I've been here a lot longer. I've read the word for the last 30 years, right? I've been to church for the last 30 years, had a perfect attendance. But having a youth come in and, and kind of uh, in a situation where I've been wrong and they kind of remind me or rebuke me, right, to say, hey, that might not have been the right approach. We yeah. just kick that kid to the side, right? So uh, I believe we have failed in, in that aspect, but uh, uh, yeah. All right, all right. And uh, so it might be strange that uh, I have all these uh, youth pastors and youth ministers, uh, youth pastor, youth minister, assistant pastor, and then um, I uh, have the pastor of music. Um, and although uh, Pastor Marcus, which is also uh, one of our uh, pastors of music here, is going to be working with our youth with some things we're going to be talking about because we just made a shift and a change. Uh, but uh, Minister Doug is, is our worship leader here. And uh, so, Doug, what I wanted to, to ask you about, uh, because we have learned here at Ecclesia that every generation has a sound. And um, uh, sometimes we're guilty of um, shunning the sound of this generation when it comes to music. And now, you know, uh, I like to think I'm versatile, uh, but there are some things that's kind of out there for me, you know, even me, but uh, you, you seem to have um, done a, a really good job with, with uh, really blending, you know, our worship up un, until this point. Um, I know you do a couple of hymns uh, sometime, um, I, I know uh, you jump on the stage sometime and and uh, sometimes you just may growl or, or, or may do something like that. But um, when it comes to uh, and, and you're you're not in my generation, you're, you're kind of in your own generation. What what's different? Uh, what would you say is different about the the music that this generation and this youth um, feel more comfortable, you know, uh, that that's more their their sound. A lot of it is beat driven, you know. Um, what would you say? Um, what what's the difference in, in in the the sound or or some of the things you notice? What's the difference? And I don't know. You may want to use technical terminology. Don't mean I'm gonna understand it. But uh, what would you say is the difference about the sound of yesterday uh, or the sound of today? And then maybe you could address what's the same about the sound what's different about the sound um i i think the sound of yesterday let's start let's start there okay um, when we look at the the older saints they they tend to um come from a place of what we've been through when, mm -hmm. when you look at the hymns you talk some of the hymns talk about you know what we struggle with in our past and stuff like that stuff like that um as far as the youth goes, I think now, like you said, is is more beat driven. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically just something that gets their attention. 
you know. Okay. I, to me, music, I, and I think um, universal, it's a universal language. True. Um, it's, it's what they can relate to. Um, it's more about, you know, if I put a beat to this, this scripture, they tend to, you know, repeat this scripture and it become more in their spirit by the music that's put to it. Okay, so, you know, you really don't know it, but you really just kind of led me into where I wanted to go, uh, because for, for the entire team, uh, we're on the verge of, of doing something. It's going to be it's not cutting edge, but it's going to be brand new for Ecclesia because, uh, number one, we're returning to worship on June the 7th. And we're going to talk about that because we're not careless. We're uh, it's not like we're going to do it without accountability. I, I promise you. Uh, we're going to talk about some of those things in a moment. But also, we are introducing for the very first time uh, Pastor Jamie uh, and Pastor Carson, uh, along with Minister Ashley and Pastor Jeremy. They're going to assist them. We're going to have our very own youth church where they're going to have their own praise and worship team. They're going to have their own musicians. Uh, they're going to come to know God in a way that's relevant to them. So, so Doug, you said something, you said, you know, you can take a, a song and you can put a beat to it. And are you suggesting that we can utilize new methods to teach the same message? Or did I, did I misunderstand what you said? 100%. Okay. 100%. Wow. Wow. Uh, so, you know, I want it when we talk about shifting and we talk about hearing the voice of God, you know, sometimes I, I do believe that we want we you know, we we want the next generation to know God. We uh, we want the next and, you know, I hear a lot of negativity and a lot of complaining about the next generation. I do about the people that are coming up. But I think the question should be. Do we want them to know our God or do we want them to know our religion? What do you think about that, Jamie? Uh, Pastor Jay. Oh, definitely. So that even goes back to the last question. Uh, we want them to have a relationship with God, but with this next generation, we can't continue to do this, the old things, right, to try to get them in here. So as we talked about, Apostle talked about earlier, them here being in here to service, in, in service, they're learning servitude, but they have to have a place for themselves so they can worship in their own way, right? And I know they have great ideas and they want to do things different. And and sometimes with the with the uh, older with the adults in the service, it doesn't cater towards the youth, and they kind of zone out. And when they kind of zone out, you, you lose them. Um, they may may have retained something, but you have to have something to keep them interested and involved and engaged because they're very active. They want to move. They want to you know interact with one another so we gotta keep them engaged so so uh, are you speaking to the uh, multiplicity of pastors that i talk to the multitude of pastors um that complain or the deacons or the church mothers complain that the teenagers sit in church on their cell phone 90 percent of the time are you suggesting that part of that reason may be because our services are not catered to pique their interests. That, that's exactly right. And, um, and then even as adults and even parents, we need to also encourage them to be off their phone. So sometimes it's not just the church and the pastor, it's the mothers and fathers who are actually sitting next to them to help them stay engaged. Don't allow them to get on their cell phones or do everything else because we are actually coming here so they can learn about God and even be in his presence. We want them to actually uh, 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 be in his presence and understand what it means to be here. Uh, but we want them to be engaged, so don't allow them to have distractions. Have them focus, and uh, they may attain something at the end. Um, but to your point, I believe that, uh, yeah, they'll zone out. And when they zone out, they'll look to other things to kind of take their attention. Wow. You know, I may take some of that. That may be true for the for the adults that's in worship, too, because uh, some of them zone out, too. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So here's the million-dollar question that I know. And uh, by the way, guys, if you have questions tonight um, that you want us to answer, uh, we have someone that's, that's monitoring uh, the page tonight. So if you have a question uh, that you want uh, us to answer, uh, because... I believe God is going to use this next generation. I, I don't believe they're lost. I don't believe, I, I just believe they don't want 
the things that we have adopted as relationship, but they're really religion. You know, does it really matter what you wear to church? And, and I'm not trying to debate that may be good for you at your church, but, but would you rather little Johnny stop going because you want to put him in a suit and he want to wear khakis and a polo? You know, th those are the things we have to decide. Uh, we have to differentiate what's the difference between our religion and relationship with God. So everyone up here is a parent. So I'm going to let all y'all touch this question. So, um, you know, you hear so much now people saying when I was a child, I was made to come to church. And uh, I don't go now because my parents made me come. Uh, is that something parents should consider or is it our responsibility as a parent? Now, I got my answer informed from Proverbs twenty-two eighteen, but I want y'all to be free in your own opinion. Uh, let me just break that question down. Should we make our children come to church? And at what age should we let our children have that own this, their, their own uh, opinion about that? Or, or, or at what age should they have the right to make their own decision? And I know I'm going to get a lot of feedback uh, out on social media. But uh, whoever want to just run with that. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 13-year-old, um, 11-year-old, and a 7-year-old. And according to Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, that basically means for us is I'm setting a standard. Uh, I believe if I train my children up, if I set that standard for them, I'm not necessarily making them. They're just seeing the example that I'm setting. I highly encourage them to go. I'm putting them, I'm making it a habit that this is what we do. So now it's normalized that this is what we do. Now, when they get older, um, I hope and pray, and according to scripture, I'm teaching them and training them, not this is just something that we do, but why is it that we do it? And again, you're talking about how religion and things of that nature. I don't want to teach my children the religion. I want to teach them relationships. So um, for me, it's not that I have to make them go, right? It's just this is the standard of this is your father. This is a standard that, that I'm setting, a principle that I'm setting that we're going to go to the house of God, and these are the reasons why. Okay. All right. Next. Who else want to get go? Um, <laughs> I would say um, I have a 20-year-old and a 16-year-old. Um, and now that my daughter is older and she's away in college, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't like there with her when she was younger. Mm -hmm. but, um, just look at it now from being an infant until, you know, maybe out of, out of high school. Um, I just think about it being a presentation stage versus pressure. Like, now that she's older, I've already presented church to her. Wow. So now I don't have to pressure her into going to church. So okay. Like All right. Okay. Got two more parents. Um, Let's talk about the single mom. Yeah. Let's hear from the single mom. Single mom. Uh, being a child of a single mother. Okay. I was made to go to church. All right. And I hated it. Okay. When I became an adult, I took off about probably about four or five years with, with, with no type of feeling about it. Okay. But I have a 13-year-old and I have a 16-year-old. I have one that's going to be at church as long as the church doors are open without me opening my mouth. My 16-year-old, he's a little different, but my question to him was, why don't you want to attend church? Mm -hmm. His answer to me was, why is it that only certain people in the church live a certain way. Oh. That was enough for me to think about um, because I'm one of those parents, I don't want to be the one that come in and I'm Mary in church and when I go home, I'm Jezebel. Oh. <laughs> my, my children are looking at that. <laughs> I mean, so on, a, on another tip, no, I, I I totally disagree. I don't think the mother part of me says yes. Mm -hmm. Make them go to church. Mm -hmm. But the the Jesus part of me says let me work on him. Mm -hmm. Because evidently it's something that he's not getting within these doors that he needs to receive. 
Wow. And I know in some areas I can't give it to them. Yeah. So I, I don't think that children should be made to go to church. Yeah. So that, that kind of goes back to that, are we teaching them religion or are we teaching them to have a relationship? Because religion cannot give you what you can get from, you can only get from a relationship with, with Jesus Christ. Let, let me ask you this question, actually. If you had to raise your children again, would you do some things differently? I would do a whole lot of things. I know I would, too. I just wanted I to ask because yes, I, I, I know I would. I, I would do some things differently, and um, I just would. I mean, I consider myself to have been a great parent, but, um, you know, I know that I'm still flesh, and I know that I'm still human, and I know there were some days I could have demonstrated more love, more compassion. I could have said things. Uh, I could have explained things um, from a, a scriptural standard, as you talked about, versus you're going to do it because I said do it. Because, uh, you know, that creates rebellion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly what you said. I think, especially the age that we have now, especially with social media, and I know we're going to get to that later, but it's, it's not that... Back in the day, I knew if my mama just had to look at me, yeah, and I was straight up, straighten up. But now it's that that question or interrogative um, uh, mindset that they have. They want to know why, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just tell me that and be then they're going to be satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. So definitely the explanation and and that does several things. You're spending time with them. You're showing that you're spending time with them. You're showing that you actually care about their feelings, about the, what they feel about a certain matter. So I think that speaks volumes. So I'm not just telling my kids, oh, you're going to do this or else. Yeah. You're going to have to continue to say that or else. And they're going to try to figure out, okay, what is the what else? Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. I think explaining yeah. is, is, is really, uh, really, really good. Yeah, because, you know, our children are not afraid of us now. I was a, my mama didn't have to look at me. I was afraid of the thought that my mama might look at me. You, you know, <laughs> that, that. but anyway. All right. Pastor Jay. In my household, um, see, my kids, they range from 20s down to even three. And um, even starting out, as, as Pastor talked about earlier, it starts at the home. And you have to teach them as they're young so they see it as being normal, that it's not being a religion, but it's being more of a relationship. But you have to talk with them and remind them and give them the scriptures and teach them from home. Because as they come to the building, we're just coming together as houses of the Holy Spirit of coming together in this house as we come together to worship and and, and uh, hear the word on a corporate basis, it starts from home. So for me, um, and, and here's the thing is, a lot of us have came to the Lord at different ages. So yeah. for some households, we never grew up like the Jewish customs. Where right. As a child, you had to memorize the Torah. True. So memorizing the Torah and seeing it from a young age, as you got a little bit older, it was the norm. But in the American culture, depending on when you come to the age and when did you get the revelation to how you're going to uh, be the be the leader of your household, how you're going to teach, you know, make sure your wife or husband, uh, how you're going to raise up your kids um, in the Lord. Um, it starts at different ages and parents are learning as they grow. Uh, sometimes you will get the rebellion. But for me, uh, I'd rather talk to them, bring them up in the Lord doing different things they have to see what i'm doing yeah. it can't be just hey we're going to sundays uh, we're getting all dressed up get your get your clothes ironed up go to go to bed early on sunday night wake up early get your clothes on because we're going to a building and then after we leave the building we're going home and don't talk about jesus until next sunday Woo! so uh I, i've lived that and i've been there growing going to church at a young age then as I got older, I went away from that because I didn't have a relationship. I just knew a man was on the cross, I had to do an Easter speech every so often. You may do a Christmas play, but it was more so going to a building than having a relationship. But as I got older and had my own uh, experiences and then trying to hear the voice of God and spending time in his word, then that's when I realized a lot of the things I was doing as a child, I was still a child even as an adult. And that's what changed my perspective. Wow. So uh, I think that's good segue. You know, maybe about a year ago, Pastor Jay, I don't know if you and um, Pastor Carson was talking about it, but I know in one of our leadership meetings, uh, Pastor Carson kind of, you know, put it on the floor and she asked me, could you guys have your own worship service? And um, tradition, uh, 
I don't know. Could have been ego. We, 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 you know, because sometimes we think, um, you know, because, you know, sometimes we think if we're not preaching to crowds, uh, then some, somehow we're not, um, there is that temptation. Let me put it that way that, of course, y'all know now, I go for broke. You ought to see that, you, you know that now from this quarantine and uh, from this pandemic with three people in the church, I'm, I'm still going to preach. But perhaps, you know, I can't deny that maybe there was some ego there. Uh, uh, if, if our children, of course, um, I, I got four adults that's going to be in our annex building, having their own church, that's for adults not going to be in the worship service. Then I'm losing uh, camera operators. I'm, I'm losing people that work in sound ministry. Um, so I, I guess as we talk about introducing our children to, to God, in a way, you know, I, I wasn't there when Pastor Car Carson asked me, I believe it was about a year ago when she said, hey, can our kids have their own worship service where they, you know, we're going to still preach from the same Bible. We're going to still preach the same message. And what I'm getting at, because when parents bring their kids to me or to you guys, um, and, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, one of the main things I hear when I talk to little Johnny and little Susie about why you don't want to go to church, they say it's boring. Or I don't understand what the pastor's saying, or I don't understand uh, the person that got up and ran around the church, or speaking in tongues, or uh, I don't understand people that lay out, fall out, uh, and don't y'all condemn that because they don't understand grandmama having a convulsion which looked like a seizure on the front row. They, they don't want to, I know the first time my mama shouted in church, I cried. I thought she was dying. I didn't know what was going on, you know, so we can't criticize any of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and people have their different expressions and experiences. So I want to know, what are you guys going to be doing that youth church is not going to be boring? And uh, what's going to be different about this space that I'm giving you all? Because what we're going to be doing, uh, we've broken our youth down into three major subgroups and then got some smaller groups. So um, we're going to have nursery and infant care. And, uh, you know, because it's so unfair to bring a, a, a baby in church and expect that baby or that three-year-old to sit here for an hour and a half service. So we know that part. And then we do children's church. Uh, that's going to be for ages 5 to 10. And they're getting the word broken down uh, where they can uh, understand it. And they can go home and they can learn Bible studies and they Bible stories and they can learn scripture. But uh, this brand new thing, uh, not of this world, youth church, because that's your theme uh, that you, your youth. We're in the world, but we're, we're not of this world. So this is a 11, 11 to 17 year old youth church that uh, yes we're going to have some adult supervision but they're going to be doing their praise and worship one of our youth are going to be playing the drums they're going to be the the psalmist they're going to be leading uh if they play keyboard or guitar we would be letting them do that too um so what's going to be different about youth church that's not going to be boring uh or what freedoms will they have that they may not have here i'm just it's a good time for y'all to tell me, matter of fact. <laughs> All right, so the, the very first thing is they have their own space. That, that's the first thing. So even during Bible study last night with them, uh, thank you for those, you know, showed up and uh, kind of talked about it. Which was bit. virtual, we virtual, might add. Right, it was virtual with the Zoom meeting. And um, so I kind of pitched that out there, throwing it out there, and you just see all their eyes light up. Wow. Excitement. So just having their own space, and then they had started having questions. They were throwing questions out. They want to get involved. They want to do this. They want to do that. So the first thing is just giving them the opportunity, mm. I believe, was the biggest thing. Okay. Um, and they're just jumping in uh, after that. So, you know, in the high rise, it's going to be catered to the youth. So we are the adults. We're going to supervise. We'll give them the word. But we're not going We're not going to not, I'm sorry, we're not going to not listen to their ideas and suggestions because it's about them, right? We want them to be excited to come to, to the church. 
Be excited to tell their friends about it, excited to tell their schoolmates about it, you know, their family members. Um, so there'll be games. I mean, there'll be, you know, breakfast, fellowship, music, not traditional music, but, you know, music that is God, you know, with God's word in it. But it's to a beat, right? Yeah. Upbeat, excitement, you know, things that they cater to. And uh, if they have any additional ideas, uh, we will listen to that and move forward with that. So it's going to be totally different than what they've been used to growing up in Ecclesia for the last 20 years, right? Yeah. For 18 or 17 to 11 years, because all majority of the youth have known nothing but the sanctuary. Adult church. Adult church is what they Come on, clap known. those hands. Come on, clap those hands. And that's all they know, right? <laughs> so this is an opportunity for them to have their own space to get in because, look, they asked for it. And wow. You know, so we'll have a time to get engaged have excitement up there and it's just not going to be just sitting down and not moving around and things of that nature so it's gonna be very exciting a lot of movement going on okay so pastor g and and, and minister ashley uh i know you're going to be on the preaching team for that um how are your messages going to differ than if you were preaching here in the sanctuary or teaching here in the sanctuary whichever one of y'all want to go first uh, are there some intentional things you're going to do in your preaching oh you I know for me, um, I like to, kids are visual for one, mm -hmm. um, they're hands on for two, and um, you have to get their attention span, right? So we're not talking about 60 minutes of thou, this, other, you know. You're not going to speak the king's old oh, English? No, no. <laughs> what? Because the, the goal is understanding, right? So yeah. I know I can have a conversation with Pastor Jamie, but I can't have that same conversation with my uh, 13 year old right I have to kind of break some of the words down I want to make sure that they really understand what I'm saying and as, as they, they these guys said earlier you know when they're in the main service and auditorium uh, it's either boring we're not speaking the same language mm -hmm. although we're saying the same thing right. Right. right so we need to figure out a way so what we're doing is we're being intentional of how we preach so the basic con the basic rubric rubric is okay here's the introduction this is what we're going to talk about and we're going to give them basically some three points that they can remember, right? Okay. So, because at the end of the day, we want them to be able to know what we said in the way that they can understand that they can also apply it. So, you mean to tell me people ought to leave church and know what the pastor said? Oh, yes. Lord have mercy. Not just simply, oh, we had a good time in church. But what did the preacher preach about? Uh, I don't know. It was just a good service. Cut so. it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> so, 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 actually, this is a question I'm going to ask you. So, uh, uh, when um, before we started... Uh, you use something from New Jack City, maybe? Nino Brown. Nino Brown. All right. And I wasn't quite familiar to you schooled me on what that was about. So will you do any preaching that will use contemporary images and music of today and sports figures? Will, will, you, will your preaching be like that? It will, whatever it takes to bring. What we have to understand is we're not taking the church into the world. We're bring, trying to bring the world into the church. Uh. So whatever it takes to get the younger generations involved, that's what the church is not going to have to do. So if it's, you know, putting sermons pertaining to movies, yeah. Um, basketball players, you know. Yeah, because I know all y'all waiting. I, I bet y'all trying to be the first one to preach, to preach that Jordan movie. Uh-oh. <laughs> The last dance. I know all y'all trying to get a sermon yes, off sir. that. <laughs> so whatever it takes to get them involved and to get an understanding with them and for them to see Christ and find him, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah, because, you know, here's the heart of everything I'm talking about tonight and the reason I want you guys to come, because God even speaks to our youth. Man, you know, we, we have some youth that have... Uh, uh, we have some youth that have shared in service, and, and we've just said that with our mouths hung open because of the profundity of the word that, that they got from God or their ability to uh, take a scripture and, and say this is what it means. You know, we have some kids here that really study the, the word. Now, they may get in trouble in school, but, but they really study, you know, the, the word of God. And um, so, so that's good. So... Um, I, here's a question I wanted to ask because, uh, and I just kind of wrote down some things that people are kind of debating about. If a youth read the Bible on their cell phone, is that the same word that's in on papyrus paper? 
<laughs> or <laughs> it's not on papyrus paper. Is that the same word that's in the Bible? Or is that problematic? Or is that some of our hangups that we really need to let go? And whoever want to answer that can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I believe that's probably part of the, the hiccup that we have uh, as uh, generations move forward, technology moves forward, and the youth are very engaged to the devices. And for most of the part, uh, with the cell phones and tablets, they've probably been around longer than they've been born, so they've grown up with these devices. Mm -hmm. And uh, their friends are on it and things of that nature. So what's great about having these devices in this information age is they have the ability to find and get information by downloading the Bible, uh, opposed to uh, to having the, the you know the paperback Bible, you know I like those as well. But they can put their cell phones in their pocket, and anytime they need the word, they just pull it out and pull that app up and read. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how how considering today's culture, how important would you guys say, um, Doug? I know you're kind of leading our tech department and um, working on an app right now uh, for the church, and we've envisioned morning chat rooms and. Um, where the kids could go on and, and Pastor Jay or Pastor Carson could send out a morning prayer, a morning devotional. How important is technology going to be? Because uh, I think this is one of the shifts that the church is facing. And I think God put it in our face. You know, a, a lot of churches didn't have the ability to stream. They didn't have the ability to give online. Uh, uh, they didn't have these social media platforms and they had to scramble. And it's kind of like God just put it in our face and said, you're going to do it or die, you know? Uh, so Doug, how important do you think social media and, and churches becoming technologically savvy, uh, or for this church, we won't even talk about anything else. God has called any other church to do. How important do you think that is for us to engage technology in presenting the gospel? Uh, I think it's very important. Um, just looking at, I know before this whole pandemic thing, um, the church was just here locally. You come here and you get the word, but now it's like the church has been forced to become international because of the, you know, the whole pandemic thing going on. So I think technology is, it's the way of the world today. Um, and it's just, cause you look at it like Lifeway, the Christian bookstore, you can't go there anymore because right. they closed down. You have to order everything online. So right. I think that's, it's very, that's just the way it is. Now. Yeah, you know, our church, uh, because of the pandemic, we became a mega church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we, we did. We, we became an instant mega church because of um, because of the pandemic. I, I'm, uh, I mean, literally, uh, our membership grew literally and, and numerically uh, be, because of that. So um, uh, I do want to leave space. If you have questions, maybe if you have questions about uh, youth, if you have questions about youth ministry, we don't know everything. Uh, matter of fact, we just sat here a couple of weeks ago and brought in a team uh, to help us even perfect what we're doing and to become more relevant uh, to this age and to um, this demographic of people. Uh, you know, we got the millennials, we got the X, the Ys, the Zs, and I believe God still wants to speak to every generation and um, I, I think the church has got to um, become more fluid because God is still speaking. He just speaks in a, you know, a, a different language. When my mom, you know, was coming up, it was James Cleveland and Mahalia Jackson. And uh, when I was coming up, it was, uh, you know, Kirk Franklin and Fred Hammond. And it's still them. But for this generation now, uh, y'all listening to... Uh, 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 Jonathan McReynolds, yeah, James Fortune, yeah. You know, one of uh, Lecrae, and one of the worst things I hate to hear people say is, uh, you know, uh, I just don't like that music, or I hate that music because every generation has a sound. You know, we have people that. Um, <laughs> Now, I'm kind of cross-blended, you know. Uh, I like some Commodores. <laughs> I, I, I like some, matter of fact, Betty Wright just died and it broke my heart. Don't get, okay, pray for me then if you don't understand. But anyway, and, and then I like some Uncle Charlie, you know. Uh, uh, I, I just like music in general. And I know some of y'all too saved for that. I know you listen to it in private. And then when folk come around. You pretend you don't listen to it. All I'm trying to say is every generation has its sound. And if we don't open our hearts and we don't open our minds that 
God can still be speaking um, through these new artists that are sp expressing God. And I think that's what we're talking about. You know, we got a little rapper here, um, uh, jazz. I call her Kumo J. You know, uh, jazz raps and you can understand the rap. Now, now some of this other rap, I, I don't understand. Uh, mama rap, ma -ba 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 -ba. I, I, I don't. I ain't making fun of it. I just don't understand. But guess what? There's a whole generation of, of, of people coming that understands that. You know what, guys? In addition to that, I met a woman. I was sitting in the hospital. Um, my dad was, was there. And a lady came over to me. I had no idea about this. She said, uh, Pastor Fitzgerald, I want to apologize to you. And I said, OK, she said, uh, my son wanted to come to your church because he knew you would let him rap at church. And he was really in the gospel rap. And I hated it. She said, but I want to apologize, first of all, that I didn't let my child come. And I also want you to pray for my child because now he doesn't go to church at all. And he raps for the world. So, you know, I, I wonder sometime, are we part of the problem? Instead of being part of the solution um, to letting God um, continue to use this generation. All right. What do you guys see for this next generation that's coming in God, uh, coming up in God? What do you see? I guess for me, one thing I, I know about these kids or this generation is when they see a cause, then they're going to jump for it. Oh, they're we've gonna, seen that. They're going to they're gonna go all the way in, and you're, it's going to be hard to really – um, control them so when they find something that they're passionate about they're going for it yeah so I believe once we um, you know let them experience that freedom and and, and make, the scripture says um, our ch children are like arrows in the hands of a mighty man yes so and blessed we, is the man whose quiver is full and once we point so to all the of them direction. are blessed <laughs> all right go ahead <laughs> so, so once I think what God is, is showing us is once we point them in the right direction we, all we just need to do is just let them go. Yeah. And I believe God will continue to allow his Holy Spirit to guide them. And uh, next thing you know, they're, they're doing great things. They shall do great exploits. So what I yeah. see is they, they're just looking for that direction, and they're going to go all the way in doing it. Yeah. Because, you know, one day we're going we're gonna to leave here. Right. We are going to, to leave here. We are. Now, I think there are some foundational things, you know, when it comes to the doctrines of salvation, repentance, regener regeneration. Uh, there are some foundational things they still need to know, but we need to teach it at a level they can understand it. Yeah. What, what do you see, Pastor Jay? What do you see for this generation of youth that uh, are, are, I'm going to say they're budding, they're emerging? I, 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 just, I just see that they, the, the youth, they have a lot of passion. They have giftings that they want to get out there to, to what Pastor uh, Jeremy was saying about pointing them, but they need to have the right people pointing them in that direction. And for here, we allow them to cultivate that gift, right, in ministry. Some may be dance, some may be rapping, some may be singing, right? Uh, some may be cooking, some could be whatever it may be that God has passioned them to do, because that's the things that God would want to push them into the world to do and be uh, to, to move the kingdom forward. So I think that the, the youth are, are really, there's a, there's a big movement, and the, and the youth are just wanting to be able to have the floor to do what it is God has called them to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Mr. Ashley, what do you see for this generation that's coming forth? I see that God is going to use our youth to bring in more youth. Yeah. They're yeah. going to look at the youth that's being produced at Ecclesia, and they're going to, you know, they're going to lift up a standard so high that, they just want to follow what's going on over here. Yeah. So I think that it's going to, this move is going to be a big move. It's a move that God had laid on my heart. I never said anything about it. Yeah. Um, even with the with the music, about two weeks ago, I mentioned to Doug, I said, man, let's produce a CD with all beats, take the lyrics out, and let's make them all Christian lyrics. Oh, wow. So I think that everything. They call that a mixtape, don't they? Is that a mix, what a mixtape is? Okay. I'm, we'll just, I'm just trying to keep up with the lingo. That's yeah. all. <laughs> so it's like everything is going to flow. Yeah. Everything is just going to flow, and we're just going to believe God for everything. Wow. That, that's awesome. Because, you know, I know we have a, um, how old is Kylie? Uh, is Kylie four, five, maybe five, six? 
you know, uh, Kylie acknowledges that six year old that that, you know, she wants to be a preacher and that God has called her to preach. And from what I understand at home, she's uh, making preparation to, to preach. And uh, she is asking, you know, even in her some of the Sunday school teachers or the small group, as we call it, teachers tell me how uh, even at four and five, those kids lead prayer uh, in that room and how they pray for each other or um, they're very eager to, uh, you know, if they're having snack to bless the snack and uh, all of those great things. So did we get any questions that come in? I want to make sure uh, if we got any questions, maybe you have a question uh, about your youth, um, about your own children or something we want you to ask that on tonight because we definitely um want to entertain that and um you know i gotta say i uh i think we've covered everything that i wanted us to cover i i'm really excited i'm, I'm really excited about you guys i'm excited um uh, pastor marcus as i said will be uh, a part of this team um as well and eventually uh we're gonna hire a musician just for uh, the youth church, um, and um, it, it, it's going to be, I, I know it's going to be awesome. Um, they're going to have lights in there. I don't know. They may have smoke machines. I don't know. Um, it, it's not going to look like what we do, but what my expectation is at the end of a Sunday evening, families will be able to go home, and they'll be able to talk about Jesus. Uh, from the youngest child in that family uh, uh, to the teenager. And uh, y'all know we have some kids here that love coming to church. We, we have some children here that cry. Uh, and I've had to talk to some of the parents because we used to have parents that when they wanted to punish their children, they would take church away. And I don't care what you take away. Don't, don't take away your child's time with the Lord. You know, don't do that. That's just my little personal uh, um um, opinion about it if they're coming you know invite them to come so uh, let's get on this subject because we are coming back so when we come back uh, our youth are going to be at their own building our children are going to come through their own entrance uh, they're going to have their own check-in but we I feel like we have made a great effort um, to be accountable and our leadership team met last night, and uh, you guys helped me with some of these things. So I know we're putting in um, the self-dispensing sanitizer stations that are going to be at all of our entrances. Um, I think we also talked about we're going to implement checking everyone's temperature that comes. Uh, we, we talked about encouraging and also having masks to give out. For everyone uh, when when they entered, uh, what what are some of those other things precautions that we have put in place? Because we don't want people to think we're so fanatical about gathering that we're overlooking safety and uh, those issues. What are some of those other things we've talked about in that meeting? Social definitely, we're, we're we're I'm sorry, we're definitely using uh, wisdom. We're definitely applying those. Uh, CDC regulations and rec recommendations, uh, social distancing, we're definitely going to do that. So we're not asking people to, to be huddled like we normally do in church. Um, so I can't turn to your neighbor. Yeah, we, don't, we, we won't be able oh, to Lord. look from a distance, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, be like, wave at your neighbor. Turn and wave at your neighbor. Can't high five your neighbor. Give them peace. Give them deuce signs. Go ahead. So we are, we're, we're actually preparing. We're, we're being accountable. Uh, we're taking this. We're taking it seriously. Uh, we're taking it very serious. So we have a lot of signage up uh, that you guys can can see. We got greeters in the front that'll be wearing masks. Uh, we also have a brief, brief questionnaire as well that just to ask those simple questions: ha Have you been running a fever? Have, do you feel sick? You know, things of that nature. Uh, because again, as you said, we're trying to be accountable, and yeah. we're also spaced out, which is uh, one of the reasons why we we are having the that children church and them having their own space. So it helps us. Uh, uh, followed by those guidelines of social distancing. Okay. All right. What were you going to say, Mr. Dev? He answered it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, I, I know we do things like everyone use their own mic, and before that change hands, uh, we clean them and make sure that they're sterilized, uh, the doorknobs and, and uh, th those different things. So um, we won't be hugging. 
there's some things we talked about. We will be uh, encouraging people not to hug. Uh, we will be encouraging people from different households uh, not to sit together. Husband and wife may choose to sit together. And um, I, I think we're asking what in our sanctuary, everybody to sit with two seats in between them or something like that. Yeah. All right. So and uh, we're going to also be uh, cleaning after every service in every space in our youth space um, a as well. So um, uh, there is a question that, that I was going to ask. So for the people who choose to stay at home and watch, uh, do you guys think that means that they don't have no faith if they choose to, to not if they have uh, under underlying underlying health issues that put them at a, a higher risk uh, is something wrong with their faith if they don't come to the church when we open up not at all <laughs> not at all uh, not at all and I believe that uh, it's just an opportunity right but we're not looking down on anybody who says hey I'm not ready for that yeah I'll, I'll stay at home. One thing I love about it is, is I think you said it earlier, is that this this gives us the opportunity to be international. Yeah. So the same word doesn't just stay in the four walls. It transcends that wherever you are. So you're, you're not less than, we're not deeper than, uh, or whatever the case may be. So the same God that's going to be here is going to be the same God that's going to meet you wherever you are. All right. So what about, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what about, those people who say, well, what about the people who want to come here, although we can't make an adult do anything, but we're going to highly encourage you to wear your mask. Um, so uh, I was on a call today uh, with Mr. Kyle Buchanan and about 75 other leaders from our community. And so he was educating us on uh he, he used a, a, a word in the, I can't think of the word, but the root of it was aerosol, uh, which basically meant um, there is that possibility from singing and preaching of things going out in the air that, that we could not see. And so uh, for me, it's impossible for me to preach with a mask on, but we are going to be encouraging those who are the recipients. And I think Doug even mentioned that. Uh, he was going to recommend that the praise team, while singing, don't wear their mask. And maybe I don't wear, maybe I wear a mask while I'm receiving from the praise team. But when I get up to give, maybe take my mask off. I think we were talking about some of those things. So uh, what about if we encounter someone who says, well, the Lord is going to take care of me. I ain't worried about all that. I'm not worried about all that. Uh since you're also an EMT, uh, what, uh, what, what kind of answer would you, or what would you say to a person that, that said, Pastor G, I'm not worried about that, or say one, uh, to one of the greeters, God got me. I'm, I'm not worried about that. I would say, you know, I would not condemn that because God got me too. But for the sake of the other people that are here, uh, I highly encourage you to consider them. Yeah. As uh, Jesus would, right? Yeah. And, uh, and still uh, respectfully put on a mask. And I think that's what it's about. Regardless to what we do, we want to be accountable. And we want to be accountable for the other lives um, that we come into. But, hey, it's going to be awesome. Um, we've been serving breakfast in Children's Church now for uh, probably a couple of years. Uh, this is what I love about this church and the laborers. You can get your children up out of bed. You don't even have to fix them breakfast. Now, you need to eat something, but in our children's church and even in our youth church, um, they're going to have a time of fellowship uh, where they will eat breakfast. So if you don't have time to cook them breakfast, you can bring them. And uh, after that, they're going to start with their own prayer. They're going to have their own worship. They're going to receive their own sermon. They're going to have their own time of decision and altar call. And they're going to come to know God. And listen, I'm not going to say they don't know God now. I'm just going to say they're going to get to experience God on a level and in a way that is conducive for where they are. Um, shoot, some of them, are, are, I believe some of them spiritually are more developed than some adults I know. But they're going to get to express God in their own way. 
And uh, uh, so Pastor Jamie and Pastor Carson, I'm sorry it took me so long, but everything comes to pass uh, in his own season and in the timing of God. And uh, that's why I stay open to hear God and to hear God speak. I know my life has just been revolutionized uh, from this pandemic. I'm, I don't want to take anything for granted. I don't want to say that anything I do is the right way and the only way it can be done. Uh, because you know what, guys, right now it's about obeying God. It's about hearing the voice of God and us reaping this harvest, this end time harvest. Uh, we have all these societal ills uh, that are going on in our world today. And um, I, I know the world is continuing to wax worse. And I, I just believe the Lord is soon to return. And we need to make it our business to be vigilant about winning souls, about introducing uh, people to Christ. And I'm believing God for household salvation. But in order for us to, to see the whole house saved, there, there are some things we've got to do. And we got to keep our ear to the voice of God. And we got to let God download strategies for us to, to win our youth and for us to win this generation. I told you tonight we were still going to be talking about hearing the voice of God. And it's imperative that we do these things. Amen. And uh, continue to pray for Ecclesia. Don't forget the big fish fry encore that's going on on this Friday. It's going to begin at 430 from 430 until 730. If dark don't catch us as they used to say in the country or the street light don't come on. Amen. We're going to be giving out uh, hundreds and among hundreds of pounds of fish and we want you to come and we want you to be a part of it and we invite you if you don't have a church home uh, if, if you're looking for a church home you're looking for a new start in God uh, it's available today you don't have to wait to June the 7th but we will be right here convening with worship uh, bring your mask if you don't have a mask our greeters will have them at the front door they will have them for you they will have them in youth church for your teenagers for your 11 to 17 year old they will have it in the nursery they will have it for all of our children it's just going to be awesome before God we're going to continue to pray we're going to continue to believe that God keeps us except the Lord keepeth the city the watchmen stay awake in vain you know and so we we've got to continue to ask the Lord to keep us to protect protect us and preserve uh, our lives. Uh, uh, many of you have been touched and, and devastated in many areas. Uh, loved ones have gone to be with the Lord. I understand that personally. I'm praying for you. I'm uh, believing that God's going to keep you. If you need someone to talk to, uh, you need a referral, uh, you need some help, just let us know. We're here to serve you. We're here to be a blessing to your family. We're here to be a blessing to, to your children. Uh, we're here to be a blessing to this community. Uh, we're not condemning what God has called some other church to do. We just know what God has called us to do here at Ecclesia. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I love you. God bless you. See you at the fish fry. Don't forget the fruit and vegetable giveaway is June the 2nd. Love you. Hey, team, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, we'll do this again. We'll bring some other ministries in, some other leaders in, but, but thank you. And we'll get a report on all the things that God is going to do. Amen. We love y'all. God bless.